This video is sponsored by F3DM. So you know that you need to tune your Z offset for perfect first layers, but how do you know when it's right? In this video, I'll quickly show you what you're looking for when you're trying to dial in your Z offset with examples of what you might be seeing on your 3D printer so you know what to do to improve things. At the end, I'll also address some commonly asked questions about Z offset and give you some answers. I won't go into too much detail about what Z offset actually is. I have another video for that, which I'll link to at the end of the video and in the description below. In very basic terms, adjusting your Z offset moves the nozzle nearer or further from your bed while printing. What I like to do after setting the Z offset during the bed leveling process is to then fine tune it by printing something with a large footprint and adjust the Z offset in small increments while watching the filament laying down. I should say here that this will only fully work on a 3D printer that has a bed probe and allows a Z offset adjustment while printing. However, knowing what a good first layer looks like is important to make any adjustments to put it right, even if you can't adjust in real time and have to print and adjust a couple of times to dial it in. To give examples of what you're looking for, I've printed a number of these single layer 60 by 60 millimeter squares with different Z offsets. I also now have a digital microscope so I can show you some nice close-ups of what's going on. So first off, let's look at far too close. Now the first thing that I should say is the actual Z offset figure getting bigger or smaller is relative. On all the 3D printers I have, the Z offset figure goes into negative values as the nozzle gets closer to the bed. You might say that this is a bigger Z offset even though the number is getting smaller. This can be very confusing, so first of all, make sure you understand which direction your nozzle goes, up or down, when you ask for a bigger or smaller Z offset. I'll try to avoid these terms to save confusion and instead just refer to your nozzle being closer or further from your bed while printing your first layer. And whilst I'm printing multiple squares to demonstrate, if you're quick enough, you can usually dial your Z offset in with just one print. So, too close. In the extreme, the nozzle actually touching the bed while printing will block the nozzle and stop filament being extruded. Some have confused this with a blocked nozzle and end up seeking advice for the wrong original issue. Also, if your nozzle is actually scraping on the bed, then it's very likely to cause damage to your bed, nozzle, or probably both. If at any point you notice your nozzle touching your print surface while printing, cancel the print straight away and then go back to your printer's Z offset process and try again. Something definitely isn't right if it's actually touching while printing. Assuming that you're getting some filament extruding, having the nozzle too close to the bed will cause filament to be squeezed wider than intended and then too much overlap as the next adjacent line is printed. This will cause filament to be pushed up in areas and will leave a very rough surface if the nozzle doesn't dislodge filament that's already been laid down. Either way, this is what you'll see if your nozzle is too close. The microscope image really shows this well. I got this microscope from Amazon. It comes with different lenses for different magnification levels, as well as some slides with some interesting things to look at in close detail. I'll put a link in the description if you want to have a look for yourself, no pun intended. As we get closer to the correct Z offset, the surface that is left becomes a little smoother, but there are still areas where things are clearly not smooth yet, so we need to raise the nozzle some more. All of the filament used in this video was supplied by our sponsor, F3DM, who have just released their brand new UZY PETG range. UZY filament is known for its extremely high standards in dimensional accuracy, colour consistency and ease of use, which is why it's used by many of the largest print farms, and their newly released PETG maintains those market leading standards. F3DM are able to maintain industrial standards of quality by manufacturing their own filament in Turkey and not just buying in generic filament from China like some others. UZY filament isn't only available to industry though, you can buy any quantity you like through their website and they have a great range of colours to choose from. Next day shipping is available wherever you are and they're now using an innovative real design which not only looks great, it uses a combination of materials that makes it fully recyclable, which we like a lot. They also work well with the Bamboo Lab AMS and AMS Lite for all of you wanting multi-material printing. Check out their full range from the links in the description below. If your nozzle is too far from your bed, then in the extreme, the filament won't even stick and instead will just be dragged around the bed making a mess. As you get closer, you may start to see some areas sticking, but then other areas where the nozzle or parts of cooling ducts touch raised areas and dislodge them. It's usually quite easy to see here that the nozzle is too far from the bed. 
the real telltale of when your nozzle is too far from the bed, even though the entire print is sticking, is gaps between adjacent lines. When the print is removed, it's really easy to see that lines of filament that run alongside each other are not stuck together. However, it's not always that obvious as the first layer is printing, especially if your print surface and filament are the same colour. A torch or the light on your phone can be really useful for detecting these gaps, but another telltale of the nozzle being too far away is raised corners. Finally, this is what a first layer should look like with a perfect Z offset. There are no gaps between lines of filament and there are no raised areas. When the print is removed, we can see that we have one single sheet of plastic with no gaps. Now we've dialed in a perfect Z offset, let's answer some of the most common questions around Z offset that cause confusion. Do you need to change your Z offset for different layer heights? No, you don't. Adjusting the Z offset moves the whole Z axis up or down. If you have a first layer height of say 0.2 millimeters, then the printer will raise the nozzle 0.2 millimeters before printing the first layer. If you change the first layer height, then the printer will just move the nozzle to that height and then extrude more or less filament to achieve the correct extrusion needed. Do you need to change your Z offset for different filament? Possibly. Some filament like PETG can be extremely sensitive to a perfect Z offset. PETG can be really sticky and any filament that touches the side of the nozzle is very likely to be stretched like chewing gum and leave thin strands all over your print. If your nozzle is even slightly too close, then any filament that's squeezed out will stick to the side of the nozzle. In this case, it's sometimes better to raise the nozzle with Z offset so that it's very slightly on the high side of perfect with PLA. In contrast, some other filaments like to be pushed into the print surface more as they are naturally less sticky. I've found some ABS and ASA to be like this and a slightly closer nozzle can help. Do you need to change your Z offset for different print surfaces? Again, possibly. If you use my examples in this video, then you'll know what you're looking for and can tune your Z offset accordingly. With rougher surfaces, the nozzle will probably want to be a little bit closer as the filament can be squeezed into any dips in the surface. Again, though, you're still looking for that smooth top surface with no gaps. Does an incorrect Z offset cause the nozzle to hit infill higher up in a print? No, depending how high up you go. Some people get the wrong idea about Z offset and believe that reducing your Z offset so that the nozzle is 0.1 millimeter closer while printing the first layer also means that every layer will be 0.1 millimeter shorter in height. This is not the case. Think of the Z axis like a ruler. When you change the Z offset, you're moving that whole ruler up and down, not changing the scale of the ruler. If you have a Z offset, which means that the nozzle is too close to the bed and you get a rough surface on your first layer, this can then be translated to the layer above. However, after a few layers, it's very unlikely that you'll see any further effects, except for maybe some stringing because of filament that's stuck to the side of the nozzle. Can I adjust my Z offset if I don't have a bed probe? Possibly. The important thing to work out is how your printer knows where the bottom of the Z axis actually is. For example, before I added a bed probe to my Ender 3 version 2, it had a mechanical switch to tell the printer where Z0 should be. If I wanted to raise the whole Z axis, then I could adjust this Z limit switch up. It's not always very easy to do though, and you're usually much better off paying attention when tramming your bed to set your Z offset as accurately as possible. There's a video linked in the description which shows the best method I've found for tramming your bed with this kind of setup. If you're having problems getting your first layers to stick reliably, then check out this video which gives you seven different factors that can affect first layer adhesion with fixes. Or if you find that you're constantly having to re-level your bed, check out this video which will give you some more things to try. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future videos too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.